Right, thanks very much for giving me the opportunity to talk to you about um, our work at Saltitian Foundation. Um, today I'd like to tell you something about uh, citizens' assemblies and some projects that we ran. Um, before I can actually start about the case studies uh, I'd like to tell you about, I just want to briefly introduce you to the concept of what a citizens' assembly is. Um, a citizens' assembly is just simply a randomly selected group of people um, from the country uh, to come together over a course of a couple of weekends to uh, discuss uh, policy issues or a specific policy issue where they will listen to experts, ask questions, um, study this issue very, very uh, intensively to in the end come up with recommendations to politicians and policy makers. Citizens' assemblies around the world includes different aspects such as keynote speakers giving presentations. Usually these people are experts or, or scientific academic experts um, presenting some evidence on that particular policy issue. Uh, it can mean citizens studying policy papers and looking at the pros and cons, the trade-offs, um, and what these, what the impacts might be. Um, and just the bottom picture shows you how big some of these events can actually get. Um, now, the particular uh, case study I want to talk about is Cambridge mostly. Um, which uh, is a project we conducted with the Greater Cambridge Partnership uh, in September, October last year. Uh, and that one was on transport related problems. Um, so the main question that we were asking people to comment on is how do we reduce congestion, improve air quality and provide better public transport in Cambridge. So that meant that 60 randomly selected people from the area in Cambridge came together over the course of two weekends to uh, discuss uh, various transport related problems and listen to experts in obviously in planning, in uh, urban planning and transport, uh, but also experts in, in climate change or public health, um, and then come up with their own, their own ideas uh, about how, how they want to take transport policies in Cambridge forwards. And they had to make decisions over those very difficult trade-offs between uh, the economic feasibility of for example, how do we fund better public transport, but also uh, what measures do we should we put in place to um, stop people from getting in their cars uh, and driving into uh, the city and polluting and congesting, congesting, congesting uh, the, the streets. Uh, and now I'll just jump forward to another case study, and I'll just do this, um, not because we've worked on it, but just to give you a, a much more global, much broader kind of uh, context. So this is the uh, La Convention Citoyenne pour le Climat. That's the French uh, uh, climate convention, uh, and it's so people are so excited about this at the moment, and people are so interested, uh, and it's become so popular. Popular not only because it deals with such a big and important issue such as climate change, and it engages citizens in a way that they should review the climate policies of um, the state, but also the, the level of commitment that the politicians, especially Emmanuel Macron, who is a big proponent of this, have made. So he has basically committed himself to enacting any recommendation that comes out of this, either through referendum, through parliamentary vote or through executive orders, without any filters. So I'm just throwing this in to give you an, uh, an idea of what's happening around the world uh, with citizens, especially these randomly selected citizens body, citizen bodies to review policies for states. Um, and so I'm just going to give you a quick summary of, of key points to take away from this. So first of all, I think you will have um, noticed that the kind of the difference between what I myself have just uh, presented, the previous speaker has also been talking about, is more about citizens reviewing, how do they feel about this? How do they think about these uh, this, this scientific evidence around policies, rather than producing this science, these scientific results themselves? Uh, secondly, I think one important key aspect in this is uh, citizens actually do provide their own lived experience, which is very different to when there's just, you know, when citizens are just collecting data or, or sen using sensors to collect data. And finally, uh, I, I think there's a big uh, point about creating trust and creating legitimacy for different policy options, it's, which is why more and more politicians are turning towards these uh, tools. And with that, I would like to um, uh, thank you for your attention.